starting today. The JDC West Organization Committee would like to make an acknowledgement. The University of Saskatchewan, Saskatoon Campbell, is located on Tree Six and the traditional homeland of the Uh We pay our respect to the First Nations of the Métis ancestors of this place and we affirm our relationship with one another. We pledge ourselves to create a competition that celebrates the diverse cultures and history of this land. Uh, thank you to our judges from left to right, Peter, Nick, uh, George, Stephanie, and Tyler. My name is Jas, and I'll be the academic moderator for this presentation. Computers will have a maximum of 20 minutes to present. Immediately following the presentation, judges will have a total of five minutes to ask the presentators questions. Our academic timekeeper, uh, Selena, will hold up time cues for the presentation and the question period. Uh, judges will indicate their intent to ask a question to raising their hand. I, the presentation moderator, will call on them to ask their questions. Once the question period has concluded, the delegates will be escorted to leave the room. No questions or comments will be permitted uh, from the audience at any time. Please ensure that your cell phones will are turned to silent and that there are no talking amongst yourself or signaling to the computers for the presentation. Uh, computers, you are free to begin. Music is the heart of every city because of their ability to share joy with communities and be able to be a part of something big. Through, um, we have been able to build a legacy by utilizing music and high quality service for Canadian artists. And you have now positioned yourself as an opportunity for international expansion. But the question lies where to go to build your legacy. My name is Yuzi, and along with my teammates Sean and Dan, we are extremely excited to present to you today to help you build your legacy. The question we're addressing today is how should the fair agency approach international expansion to position themselves as a leader among the American BC entertainment industry? We'll be going over some considerations such as an expansion into the United States, utilizing growth strategies in a new region, and finally some trends in the music industry. This leads us to our four strategies leading with where to score, such as the M&A in the Midwest, maintaining your core with some team management, and finally, playing for more by initiating an artist supporting program. The impact of this is a $1 million USD in additional growth and a 5% increase in operating margin, but and also becoming a market leader in the boutique entertainment industry. So starting with our analysis, we are currently situated in Canada. You presented yourself as an opportunity for international expansion. But starting with the expansion, where should TFA go next? We have created a decision criteria to analyze where is the best region to go to. We will consider the economy of the region, such as the revenue growth and GDP, the political landscape, such as the COVID 19 situation, and trade agreements, and finally, cultural differences between the regions. You have identified some regions to consider such as Southern Africa, Western Europe, specifically France, as we have a relationship there already, as well as Northern America, such as the United States, as they have a high growth for this region to be growing. Now, jumping into the economy of each region, we have analyzed that currently North America has the highest revenue and revenue growth, as they have a 9.4 billion of revenue, and the projected market size is about 90.7 million, which is much larger compared to South America Africa and Western Europe, making it the best place in terms of the economy of the region. Moving on to the political landscape, currently Western Europe has the highest COVID-19 vaccination, but both sovereign Southern Africa and Western Europe have high degrees of caution when traveling into these regions compared to North America, where they have normal security precautions. On top of this, some current events in each region is that in Southern Africa, there's a current high unemployment rate of 35%, which could affect the the customer's disposable income. Western Europe is also facing an energy crisis, which could affect your ability to host special events. And finally, in North America, they are currently facing high inflation rates, which could also affect disposable income. But all this into consideration, North America has still the best political landscape, taking into these three factors. And finally, moving on to our cultural differences. We have done a Hofstede analysis to compare the four uh, regions. When looking at this, we can see that Canada and the United States have high individualism, meaning that it's, they think of themselves as I instead of we compared to France and South Africa. Canada and the United States also have high masculinity, which could affect the type of music 
believe that that relationship. And finally, Canada has um, low uncertainty avoidance, which is the ability to um, accommodate change. Knowing this, Canada and the United States have the closest um, hotbed for culture, meaning that the taste of music in these two regions could be very similar and make it easier for your international expansion for the music industry. So at this point, we have seen that North America is the best place for TFA to expand to know because they have the best economy of the region, they have the best political landscape, and finally, they are most similar to Canada in terms of the political landscape, which could affect the way that we succeed in this region. Therefore, TFA must expand internationally to the United States to capitalize and become an established market leader with high growth potential in the United States. Now that we have established that you'll be growing into the United States, we want to look into what are some ways that you can grow. There's organic growth and inorganic growth. With organic growth, there's things such as new market, expansion within the market, improvement of product, or new products. However, inorganic growth is one of the quickest ways to grow, such as joint ventures, partnerships, and m and Therefore, it would be best to look into inorganic growth, growth so that you can secure the best amount of growth into a new region. However, when expanding into a new region, especially with inorganic growth, your employees that you are acquiring could be affected. So we would like to introduce you to Tyler. He's 30 years old and he lives in urban areas in the United States. Some behaviors of Tyler is that he currently is interested in variety of music and loves to explore, and he enjoys playing video games in his free time. In terms of his motivation, he wants to connect with artists, which is why he's working at a company that works in the music industry. And he wants the support of a company to foster his career growth. So knowing this, to facilitate inorganic growth, TFA must implement a change management plan to bridge the gap of employees from the company that would be that would be acquired. Now moving on to place and market. Why should a buyer in the United States state pick TFA? So there are currently some trends in the music industry, specifically with COVID-19, as the United States has today reported 30 over 30,000 cases, which puts artists at risk when performing and could also affect their plan, their fans and could even cancel their events due to their health concerns. With COVID-19, there's also consideration of mental health. Holding these music festivals and concerts can take a big toll on these artists. And a big example of this was Justin Bieber. He had to cancel his purpose tour due to his mental health, despite having many resources to support him. Therefore, knowing that you support smaller artists, it's really important to take into consideration both their physical health with COVID-19, as well as their mental health. So, now that you know that this is important to position yourself amongst your competitors, we have put this on the major. So on the very right, we have our artist protection policy. So that's fostering positive relationships with the, with the artist by ensuring their health and safety. And another way to compete with your competitors is through your international presence, which you are currently doing with your expansion and having artists and buyers who can have the opportunity to work with these international and we have looked into some competitors in the United States, such as Uncle Flo, Booking and Grain Production. However, you can position yourself at the top through your artist protection policy and an international network. Therefore, to distinguish yourself from competitors, TFA must implement protection policies to support your artists. Now that we have gone over three key considerations for our TFA, I'll be passing it over to Dan to go over our org strategy. As my colleague has mentioned, all the consideration points for you to take into consideration prior to leaving your legacy and expanding into the United States. Today, we are all the consideration. We're very, very delighted to present you our old strategy of where to score, maintaining your core, and finally going to more. So with the first step, we kind of want to take a look at the different ways that you want to in organic growth. This includes joint ventures, partnerships, taking into consideration organic growth, and finally merging that. Some of the decision criteria that we have taken into consideration are financial feasibility, which is within the scope of this particular company. Second is the control of the company itself. You have the ability to make a day to day decision, or do your partner, or for example, a story venture, have more say in the decision to make. And finally is the control of the brand as well. This includes the artists you partner with, the type of events you host as well. So, taking all of this into consideration, we have realized that merger and acquisition is the best step for your company to control. So once again, due to the financial feasibility, 
for ability to control the company as well as the ability to control the artist and the type of decisions you make, we have decided that M&A is the most optimal and organic method and strategy for your growth in the United States. So looking at the first part of our first recommendation of where to score, we're looking at the different regions available within the United States that you should be expanding. So the specific ones that we've decided due to the criteria of who are your consumers as well as what are your values of the company, we have decided that Texas and Ohio, especially the cities of Dallas and Columbus, is your best step going forward. And some of the decision criteria we have came up with through the merging acquisition include, once again, the acquisition cost, which includes how feasible is it within the budget of $5 million we have provided today. As well as the number of artists and agencies available, this includes the diverse talent that's available within these partnerships and merging acquisitions to ensure that you're able to capture more customers in the growing future. Next up is the strong company finance. This includes how the company is able to generate revenue within a short time frame and really make sure that it impacts and enhances the synergy of the company. So taking all of this into consideration and the implication of their decision criteria, we have provided you an example of a potential company we can acquire in the future, including Uncle, Uncle Booking, which a, is one of your competitors within the region group at the Second part is Kind of sourcing externally for that merger acquisition process. We do understand that merger acquisition is a quite difficult process. We have broken down a simple step of how this can be applied. So number one is kind of formalize the vision of your specific company. What are you expecting out of this merger acquisition? Next up is kind of sending out a letter of interest for the merger acquisition as a whole to these different corporate financial institutions. For example, as we provided on the right, KPMG, which has services that can really help you kind of enhance this merger acquisition. Looking at our next step of maintaining and support, we have different values that we have taken to consider. So number one is what happens to the company that is kind of acquired in the future. This includes all labels kind of shifting from the acquired company to your company's brand, as we really ensure that not only does your brand really get out there, but the company was able to grow as a whole. Next up is the fact that the leadership will be staying the same. We have to ensure that when the companies are being acquired, they do understand that there will be no job losses from your end. It's more of kind of keeping the same leadership self as they know the market of the United States and consumers the best. And finally, companies will operate separately from the Saskatoon location. However, a continuous communication between the two offices will be crucial in your expansion strategy. So we recommend you, if not implemented already, but different channels that can be used for communication between the different offices, including Zoom and Teams, which have been shown to be the most efficient way of kind of communicating to the mass as well as hosting meetings and send messages. The second part is kind of implementing the change management for both your company in Saskatoon as well as within the United States. As we understand that merger and acquisition is a difficult process, it's important to kind of tackle the different steps of merger and acquisition for your employees to really feel the impact of these recommendations. So number one is kind of bringing awareness to change. This includes both the offices in Saskatoon as well as within the United States. We're kind of be sending out a re email regarding the acquisition and what does this mean for your company. The international expansion of benefit comes from them, you really have to be guided with the employees as well. Number two is to making sure that you kind of tackle the potential panic that can be within the company. By ensuring that the current and the acquired company's employees will not be losing their job, is a really good way to kind of make sure that employees feel welcome during this merging acquisition. And finally, we'll be hosting town halls as well for any inquiries that employees might have that's not covered within the packages that you can buy. Second one is kind of creating the desire for the team. So what does this create the vision for your company as an international expanded company? What does this mean? This includes highlighting the benefits of once again being an international company. Now you're not no longer just focused on Saskatoon and Toronto, but you're also now going to kind of tackle and really expand and you know, capture the customers within the United States as well. We will also establish a chain champion within this specific procedure, including a long-term inquiry, which kind of really reside with their corporate values as well as the fact that they're knowledgeable of the culture of the United States and what it means to be an international company. Third part is the knowledge part of the employees. This kind of indicates that the employees are retaining the information about the expansion as well as kind of creating that educational model in order to really ensure that new changes within the United States and the Canada is really designed with the employees. And finally, for the ability and the reinforcement, this is kind of making sure that the employees are really understanding once again the different changes and continuously updating them regarding any company changes that can happen, including transparency overall. Second is 
establishing a mentorship program for those who are kind of struggling with pain. We do that, we do understand that people kind of learn at different paces, and it's really important to kind of help those who are struggling to ensure all the company employees are on the same page. And finally, celebrating the expansion of TSA and norming the top employees during the game of five is really designing with the potential employees such as the one that we have established in her. And finally, we'll be looking at the plan for more. This is kind of going above and beyond just the merging acquisition and just expanding within the United States. So in order to really differentiate yourself from other competitors within both the United States and Canada, it's important to establish why your company and especially the protection policies kind of outstand from other competitors. This includes kind of implementing the three pillar strategies of travel visa, COVID, and family mental health. Your employees and your artists really want to be big. Everyone wants to grow, and it's important to understand that your employees and artists kind of want to go at an international stage in the future. Therefore, by kind of helping and supporting these artists to go international and kind of helping with the travel visa application will be really attractive towards artists and kind of capturing more artists and partnerships in the future. Second is COVID. COVID, we do understand that it has been getting better. However, it's still a prominent issue within a lot of these. Therefore, kind of having that continued support through rapid tests and safe tests and efficient travel methods, as well as any other additional support they require, will be a crucial step to support as well. And finally, the biggest concern. The mental health, which is as the artist continues to work and kind of improve themselves, we go to a high stress environment. By kind of getting that mental health part is quite crucial, including the connection to a therapist with the artist can reach out to, as well as a continuous check in prior to the concert to really ensure that they're feeling sufficient and so that this is both there for consumers as well to make sure that we don't cancel the event last year. And finally, we want to spread this message across all of employees as well as other artists within the United States to tackle. So let's take a look at the case study on the left, which is how a K-pop industry within South Korea kind of really spread their image about how they take care of their employees. Left is an example of a blog that's consisting of what employees and idols kind of do in their free time. It really kind of shows that not only does the company care for the employees, but also shows to the consumer how the artists kind of operate outside of their work setting, as well as other artists who are not part of the company yet, kind of really witness what the impact of the company. So now that I've covered the whole strategy, which is expected to be the legacy within the United States, I'll be passing off to my colleague, Sean, to talk about this time. Thank you, Dan. So how long is the inflation timeline for this strategy? When we take a look at the first step of actually knowing where to score, we want to take a look at the acquisition process itself. So this consists of hosting a meeting with M&A firms that you're interested in purchasing, as well as looking to prepare documents for acquisition, as it is a very legal heavy process. Following this, we'd be looking to attend meetings with companies that interest you and are interested in being acquired. We expect this process to take the next six months of your, uh, of your 2023 fiscal year. Following this, we'd like to negotiate the contracts and have final signing completed by end of 2023. Some milestones that we look forward to make sure you're on track for success is the fact that you want to have the signed purchase contract at the end of quarter three, as well as having the firm take over at the end of quarter four. With KPIs, we want to take a look at increasing your operating margins from 20% to 25% to account for synergies, as well as ensuring that your acquisition cost remains under $3 million USD. When we take a look at our second uh, recommendation here, we can take a look and see that in, 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 in the involvement of change management, we want to ensure that employees are comfortable with all the changes that are happening. To do this, we want to begin by sending an, an email to all employees at the time closest to the takeover itself. Following this, we actually be having a celebration party to ensure that employees are comfortable and are celebratory of the new acquisition and change that's happening. While this is happening, you also, know, you also want to make sure that you're able to have R&D for a training program to ensure that all employees are able to understand what the process for your specific company is. And following this, you want to establish a nomination channel. So uh, promotions like Employee of the Month as well as Employee of the Year will be being implemented to ensure that employees feel valued. Milestones for this recommendation include having launched the training program itself beginning quarter three. What this entails is having a pilot done by your current employees to ensure that there are no errors within the program itself. And to measure success, we're looking at KPIs of having a 90% employee retention rate for the new staff, and having an 80% assessment pass of all of the employees that will be transitioning over to your new company. Lastly, when we take a look at the time to go for more of the itself, our first, uh, our first key task here is to look at researching for policy implementation to ensure that you meet legal standards that are required within both Canada and the U.S. Following this, we'll be looking at getting policy approval from the executive as well as the board for that company if there is one that exists. Uh, we, this is a lengthy process, but we do expect a couple iterations to go through. So 
milestone for this will be to ensure that you have the first draft policy reviewed within the first quarter of the research and implementation itself. Through our KPI for this, we keep taking a look at having a 20% increase in talent partnerships that are interested in working with your firm as a whole. Going over some risks that we've identified for this expansion, the first risk that we've identified is the fact that misaligned corporate culture is a possibility. When you're acquiring a quantum company, it's difficult to gauge the corporate culture change that you can do. So when you mitigate this, you want to really take a look at ensuring that you're both engaging in virtual activities to ensure that the two cultures are aligned. Along with this, our second risk that we've identified is the fact that you have turnover due to change. If you do have turnover due to change, we'd be looking at sending your guests over from Toronto as well as Saskatoon to ensure that they're able to mitigate and work the job that is required and total improvement for the new staff are complete. Lastly, when we take our third risk, it's the fact that clients are resistant to the change in customer policies and this may limit our revenue. And we want to decrease this by first having a survey of both our clientele as well as our client company's clientele to ensure that we meet the demand that they're looking for. In the interest of time, I'll be skipping over financials, which we can cover later in the Q&A. Going back to our key question today of how should the preferred agency approach international financials to perceive yourself as a leader among the new American food food industry? We took a look at our strategy of the OR strategy. Where does score maintain your score search more? With our strategy, you'll be able to see a $1 million USD additional revenue as well as 5% increase in your operating margin. You will be able to become a leader, market leader in the BC industry. Thank you for listening. Yes. So based on the valuation we put for the company at $3 million, we expect this company to earn roughly around $600,000 in revenue annually. With this, with our synergies, we expect your revenue operating margin to go from 20% to 25%. So over the next five years in which you have to pay back your loan, you'll be able to generate a $1 million revenue by the end of that fifth year annually, uh, which will contribute to your profit. Uh, just to confirm, we are actually in, um, trying to make synergies work. Um, so the 90% is to ensure that when we do expand to an m and into the States, we, we do have the capacity to hire our own employees to replace the employees within that, that uh, company itself. So when we do the transition, the, the change management to ensure that our policies and the way that our processes align um, with that company is, is stable and to ensure that we're able to have the artists who we work with and the venue we work with be able to care internationally to build this thing. Yes, we did that 
we should take that into consideration, reverse right with our decision matrix, and we realize that as a boutique firm, it makes sense to start with America, considering that the music taste is similar and it would be an easier transition for your first international expansion. However, in the future, it would be beneficial to consider Europe. How do you foresee acquiring a company So when we take a look at the financials behind the client company itself, the reason we chose the US is because of the large market size and the large potential for growth. US is the international gateway for expansion. When we take a look at the US versus the options that were provided, um, US needs substantially less market share to become equally profitable. For example, South Africa presented $96 million in revenue for the entire industry. This is less than 1% of the revenue that, or of the market share that's required to get the same revenue and same profit in the United States. And when you take a look at Europe, Western Europe as a whole versus the States, it's the exact same idea. Western Europe as a whole region covers less than half the, reven half the revenue that the United States covers. As well, when you take a look at the differences in each single country in terms of music takes to region, each artist is able to only provide you a limited amount of revenue for that specific um, artist itself. So as a whole, when we take a look at the financials behind the acquisition itself, the U.S. makes the most sense for that.